the windmills. They started in 1500 or so. There were 20,000 of them in Holland in the 1700 something. So that was the highest level of industrialization. They started pumping water out there to reclaim the land. One third of Holland is in fact below sea level, so it would be more marshes and unusable. So then landowners, two or three landowners, would come together and say, well, if we want to exploit the land, we have to uh, build a mill, rent a miller man who, who would live with his family inside with 11 kids, making hardly a living, but having a home. I live on the other side of the river. I came jogging by just a few years ago and noticed that it looked kind of abandoned or empty. And there were two people running the mill as someone is running the mill now, my colleague uh, Robert. So wind's completely gone, so I need to push it even. Like there was quite some wind when you came. Yeah. Hey Josephine, these are for us, eh? So I just went in to check and see what's going on here. And then through them, I found out that the owner, that is a foundation that owns 23 windmills in the area here. They were looking for new ways to operate it or to, to, to rent it out. Ah, some wind coming back on now. So we made a deal with them. They said, well, you can rent it from us, but then you do need to do the renovation yourself and you need to get your windmiller's exam. So hooking on the sails now. So uh, I started that. And I've done 550 hours of training now on all type of windmills, also on this one. I have to show that I can run it, that it, I can run it safely, that I can explain everything about it. These nautical knots? Yeah. And always some all kinds of knots designed to be able to act quickly and swiftly when needed. As you, though you don't want complicated knots, it's, it's very similar to sailing, of course, where you use the same. I need two exams studying on theory about the weather, about all types of windmill, the name of the beams and the workings and how we put it together and how we take it out and take it apart. Nice and tight. So this is uh, the joy. And this one, is there a date up there? That's 1874. Yeah. It was built because the former mill was uh, burnt down because of lightning. Okay. Now we have grounding uh, cables, but uh, then they didn't. And so this is usually the mill is the highest point in the area. So when we have uh, lightning, that's a reason to abruptly stop the windmill, hook it up and uh, wait till it's over. So it is a water pumping mill. You can see the level of the land here is about eight feet below sea level. And then it pumps the water up into the river that is about six feet up and the, the, the water in the river is two feet below sea level and then somewhere at Amsterdam it gets pumped out to sea. So in the 50s machines have taken over the water pumping function so it still needs to be pumped otherwise it would be marshes. So machines have taken over in the 50s, windmills were neglected then. And then this foundation did a great job. They started buying them up because being neglected or having to make way for a shopping mall or something terrible like that. And then they started buying them up to keep the buildings up, to keep the trade up as well. The owner, the foundation, they were sort of considering renting it out maybe as a guest house. And then they thought, well, we are not fit to do that. So we made a deal with them. We had to renovate the interior, everything. And they, as landlord, they do the outside and the mill technique. And that I'm very happy with, because now if you look at the thatched roof, for instance, they're going to change that next year, probably. And just the top is already 20,000 euros. So you can imagine 
it's nice to have a windmill, but it's better to rent it. <laughs> so here you see the interior of the mill. You see the big beam here that goes all the way up to the top. That brings the movement down from uh, the top part to the bottom part here. And then you see the big wheel behind and the wall maybe. And behind the wall is the actual water scoop. And uh, if we pump, then this wheel would, would be running and taking the water out. And it's all wood. Yeah, most of it. But my still, with the uh, texels there. Yeah, that scales well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get into the right. Yeah. Shall we go up? Yeah, sure. We have uh, four daughters, and the moment they all move out, then we will probably move in here. And then meanwhile, we use it as a guest house or a family uh, holiday home. We have uh, three floors here, three bedrooms, and here you see the big beam running. Wow, it's right in the middle of the And here you see two letters, it's a P and an M. Uh -huh. Some say it's the signature of Piet Mondrian, the painter who painted this windmill 20 times over and in all the big museums in the world. So, well, bathroom, room up. And in fact, what we did while we were renovating, we just took everything out. So usually in winter, people wouldn't live here because it was too cold and too dampy. But we took everything off until we saw the thatch. This is a thatch roof on the outside. Until we thaw, saw the thatch and then build it up again, insulating everything, new piping, plumbing, and just taking everything away. And we want it all to be in view. So then, in fact, you don't need much besides the bed. We have one more flight up even. And if you look on the outside, you see, that's what I imagine. If, you, if I would be a kid and my father would be the miller, this is what I would experience all day. Hearing the sounds and seeing the shades and the blades passing by. Because it's part of your home. I mean, even then it was part of the home. Yeah. It was exposed. It was, uh, yeah, just like this. Wow. And then very cold, of course, because uh, they just have heating downstairs and all else would just, you know, be freezing cold. And then they would sleep with 11 uh, downstairs in one big bed. It is very silent, though. Right? It is. Because we are talking about a big structure, a big resistance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, it lifts up about 50,000 kilos in a minute. 50, so, so, so that's every force. minute. Yeah. And look how silent it is. You hear anything? No, you just hear the creaking of... It's really quiet. Why is that? Just the well greased, well balanced, well built. Not too much going on, to matter we're, no, this is not running fast. So mm -hmm. it, when we hit the brake, then you would hear it shudder and do anything. So that's one trouble that we have in the bathroom, for instance. Every now and then it starts leaking on the dining table. I see. Because if you have joints between the bath and the wall and the shuddering machine, it breaks all the time. It's just, just part of the deal. Wow. How big would it be compared to, let's say, to a mast of a big ship or...? Well, this is about 14 meters high. If you have a good sailing ship with a length of about 20, 25 meters, you could have the same. But then not as big as this, of course, because <laughs> the, the ship would, would completely sink. <laughs> I can show you just a little bit up here. It's called the, the cup zolder. So this is the head of the mill. So as you see here, the big wheel that has an axle through it, and the axle is actually what sticks out of the head. And in the head, two huge blades of each 26 meters are put through, so then you have the four blades r running. If they run, then the axle runs, and if the axle runs, the wheel runs. The wheel puts this one into motion, and eventually the big beam here that goes all the way down. So I really like the house, but this is the fun part. I mean, this is... <laughs> yeah, and here you can see it's sort of shiny. This is bee wax oh. right, to make them nice and smooth surface where they grip into each other. You have greases and oils for everything, like the iron axle lies in a piece of blue stone uh -huh. and you use pork fat for that instead of oil, for instance, because oil would soak the stone eventually and pork fat stays like a small film layer on it. And then what we need to do, if, if the wind changes direction, 
You see those cylinders here, the rolls, there's about 65 of them. And what you do, everything that is above here, with the big chain down outside at the tail of the mill, that has a big chain, you put it around a pillar somewhere and then uh, work, your, work the mill around. So then it rolls the head and you can turn it 360 degrees. So if the wind changes 180, and we need half an hour to bring the head of the mill that way because you want the blades always to stand straight into the wind. So what moves? All above this roll moves. So these are the cylinders. They roll on an iron floor here that is nice and smooth. And anything that is above, you, if you want to set it into the wind, it just slowly, slowly, slowly. It takes about half an hour to do a 180 degrees. So the entire top of the windmill moves? Yeah, 20 okay. tons of weight. All these beams here, all nice and black because you know, the, the, this is the chimney down here. So the fire they use, of course, if the head of the mill can move, you cannot have a chimney sticking out, it will break off. So this is where the smoke ends and that's why it's all blackish and that is good against insects and stuff. And it is open, of course. Everything is here for a very good reason, easy to replace and you know, hundreds of years of intelligence is in this, of course. So that's why this little stairs is up, huh? because if we would turn the head, then this one would turn with me because it moves. Wow. Yeah. And here what you see, these are the braking blocks. These are the braking blocks. This is what actually turns. This is the wheel turning. And then you see there's about one inch distance between the turning wheel and the brake block. And that's all around. You have five braking blocks that if we release the brake, brake uh, or, or if we put it back on, uh, this one grips and then the whole mill stands still. So this one is the brake here. And if I release it, and now there's this big beam where we were standing under that uses 500 kilos to bring around the braking blocks around this wheel. And so now it stands still, but I just want to keep running it until we have this blade under, or I can stop on now. <laughs> Where has the wind gone? It's incredible. The wind stopped. Yeah. So, but if we put four sails on now, it will come back on. So, last one. like dressing a giant. <laughs> yeah. You have no idea how strong I am. <laughs> this is totally different from sitting in an office. And you like this? Oh, this is fantastic. This is like meditation, mm. right? Ja, oké. Ik ben hier klaar. To see where the wind comes from, besides looking at trees and stuff, but uh, you you stand with your back against the wind. So this would be the orientation. So we're going to turn the head into the wind because otherwise it will not start running. Yeah. And now we're going to turn the head into the wind because the wind has turned slightly. Yeah. Eh? I like to keep this machine running. It is a trade and it's an ancient system, you know, where you, you start out at someone's windmill and then he would be my master teacher and I'm the pupil. And then he says after a year or a year and a half, I want you to have experience all seasons with types of weather that belongs to it and the effect on all the material that you need to know. And then he would send yeah. me to go out in the world and visit other windmills and other millers, of course, who have their story to tell and how they were taught. 
I think that is the whole system like carpenters have and in the, what's taken over in the Freemasonry, where you have a period where you're at your master's place to learn the trade, then you go out into the world to improve your profession. And then once you've mastered it, you become a master yourself. Yeah. I like to have the knowledge to be able to pass it over. One of my daughters is in fact starting the windmill training as well. And she will take over from me, I hope, eventually. That's Hattie. Ja, het is ja. vliegtuigvleugels van hout met een stuk zeil eroverheen. En er ligt een grote zware balk bovenin de kap van 500 kilo met een steen erop en alles. Die trekt eigenlijk als remblok om een groot wiel van de fiets. Maar dan zitten ze er omheen, niet er tegenaan, maar eromheen. Die trekt die blokken aan en dan zet hij zichzelf hartstikke vast. En dan moet je net als een auto ook even de rem loslaten op het moment dat je bijna stil staat. Anders ga je met je kop door de vooruit en hier heb je dan dat de as kan breken. En dat moet je dan even weten hoe dat uh, zit. Nou, hij pompt water. Hij pompt het water uit het land in de rivier. Dat is wat hij doet. So the windmill was at the lowest, that's a logical place to build a mill. But then what happens if you take the water out, the land sinks down. I think it's one centimeter, so one inch in six or seven years or so. Then it goes down and down and down. So now it's lower than the mill is and they had to sort of deepen the water scoop to be able to, to reach the water. So they did that 10 years ago or so. You see here the blades and what they in fact do is they bring the water through a narrow right, where it just fits in and then it pushes the water through and then very ingeniously this is the level water on the other side so that's six seven feet higher there's just a simple wooden door that's kept closed by the force of the water against it but once he starts pumping and he once he has as much water on the other side of the door, or even more, the pressure is higher, door opens, water goes out, as soon as the wind falls down, and then the door, because of the force of the water at the higher level, would just force the door and slam it shut. Very simple, very effective. It's a big wheel. Huh? Yeah. So once you keep it moving... It's 50,000 liters in one minute. It would take about two to two and a half minutes to fill up an Olympic pool. But you can imagine, I mean, when you have a country like this, it needs to make a difference. And, and even before the first windmills came, the land was so high that they could get the water out with the tides. So at low tides, you open the gates, water goes out. At high tide, you close the gates, water, water doesn't come in. But the land and then, sucks But so at much. some point, when the land is deeper than even low tide, then you have to think of something. And so that's why they started using windmills. Because even in 1874, when this windmill was built, yes. machines existed already, trains were running as, already. But then it was cheaper to build a mill and have someone work it than putting down a machine on coal. So these still made sense? At that, yeah. And then a lot of development was in fact done on the system of the blades, for instance, how to catch the wind in the best way, to make them more efficient. At some point they started, in the 1930, 1930s even, they said, listen, we have to come up with something because we need to make the windmills more efficient because otherwise we will lose the game from all machinery. At that point they started using all kinds of techniques like aeroplanes, how do they work with the wind? If we put that on a windmill, would that be better, easier and whatever? To be able to keep their work, because otherwise they would just you know, be out of business. With 20,000 windmills, a lot of technology, lots of people working in it. And what I also heard nowadays, everybody who has a sort of technical intelligent mind works at Philips or at some kind of big industry. At those days, they would just be at home. So if I would have six children, one of them may, might have been bright. Yeah. And then one of them would think, hey dad, why don't we do it differently? Hey, why don't we change this part for another part? 
and then you see local development so then the knowledge is spread all over. And now they're starting again by using wind energy. Yeah, those are turbines now. In that sense it comes back, uh, living from wind and sun. So you hope to this to be your full-time home at some point? Yes. Yeah. I look at myself in my old days years to come you know i would be just you know, sitting here having coffee and but still working oh yeah i would never stop no. <laughs>